Thank you so much for having me here this evening. As you know, my name's Sarah, and I'm the Regional Innovation Chair in Rural Economic Development at Selkirk College. Rural isn't just my job. It's where I live. It is the things that I am passionate about. And so by now, you've heard me say rural about half a dozen times, and it was twice in the title. And so I wanted to start with a question of what picture comes into your mind when you hear me say rural or rural development. So perhaps some of you are thinking about cows, agriculture, maybe another natural resource sector like forestry or mining. There are so many answers to what you might be thinking right now, and to be fair, it was a trick question, because there is no single answer. The reality is that rural is a very complex and sometimes contradictory concept. Rural BC includes everything that I just mentioned right now and a lot more. And this makes talking about the future of rural development anything but straightforward. Rural communities are not depressed ghost towns. They are not failed cities. They are not cities in waiting. Rural development is not a one-way transfer of wealth from urban centers to rural places. And the future of rural British Columbia cannot be imposed from the outside all of which is my way of saying that rural communities are not in need of the direction, rescue, or charity coming from urban centers. But rather, rural communities are diverse places with unique combinations of place-based assets. For the record, in British Columbia, from a policy perspective, rural is any place outside of Metro Vancouver, the capital regional district, with a population of less than 25,000. It is a construct, it includes distance and density. Realistically, it does not do a great job of dealing with that relative piece. Think about how much of BC is still covered in one lump under that definition. This is a matrix and it takes that under 25,000 definition and it subdivides it based on those distance and density measures. It gives us the ability to look at rural as not a single homogeneous unit but without getting into the community by community detail that you can't get to if you're designing provincial policy or programs. And what it comes down to is that rural is not the same as urban and that not all rural communities are the same. And I can appreciate how simple that sounds. It actually sounds blindingly obvious. The problem is that as simple as those statements are, they go completely unrecognized or completely disregarded when we start talking about the development of policies and programs. We end up with what I call an urban bias, an unintentional, um, essentially an unintentional urban leaning when it comes to policies and programs. This is a relatively simple equation. We take a decision that needs to be made, we combine that with limited rural data, and a lack of rural understanding, and we get unintended consequences and missed opportunities. And I do want to unpack this a little bit, because this is one of those foundational pieces that's important to understand. Rural data is limited in two fundamental ways. First, it gets obscured. If you are looking to a provincial trend to make a decision, four-fifths of BC's population lives in an urban place. A provincial trend is an urban trend. It's actually a lower mainland trend. You are not seeing rural reflected in it. None of the topics up here are simple. These are all really complex. This is where people like myself come in to try and bring rural data, to try and add that context. Not just to prevent the urban default, not just to prevent policy failure, but because we want to get ahead of the knock-on impacts. If we take this together, our economy and our physical environment are not business as usual. Although these changes are universal, the impacts look different in and across rural places. From a climate change perspective, proximity to the natural environment amplifies vulnerability. Rural BC is generally growing. That growth is influenced by a changing economy, changing environment. The one thing that we can very easily understand is that the future of rural is not a single thing. The future of rural British Columbia is very much plural. It is multiple futures. This is one of them. 
Outdoor recreation in BC often gets talked about from a tourism perspective or an activity perspective. It's what we do after work. What is emerging right now is a completely different dynamic on outdoor recreation. We are talking about advanced design and manufacturing. We are talking about a sector whose potential value ventures into the billions of dollars. This is innovation, and it's driven from rural places. And I want to be very clear that I am not suggesting that this is going to replace or supplant an industry like forestry or mining. That's not what we want. Economic diversification doesn't mean trading one industry for another. It means adding more so that when we hit a climate or uh, economic shock, we have options. Innovation in rural looks different, and this is often why it goes unrecognized because it takes a more applied focus. It's incremental. It often relates to what exists, just looking at it in a new-to-place or new-to-application way. When it comes to the future of rural development, it's in how do we support communities to thrive. We need to start with a basic understanding of rural, that variation in context and trends. We need to get as far away from policies and programs that take a one-size-fits-all solution as we possibly can. We need as much variation in how we approach rural development as we have in the variation in communities. And when we look to the future of those communities, we need those policies, investments, collaboration that are place-appropriate, that recognize the value of rural, and that support locally-led development. Thank you.